while just like October East Enders also remains in 10th place, so the bottom two soap operas remain the same month to month in November. I can't lie though, I found East Enders more watchable in November, but it's still either boring or it's still a bunch of characters I don't care about, which are some of the same issues I have with The Young and The Restless currently. But I at least see EastEnders, or should I say British Broadcasting uh, Channel, seems to care about the soap opera because they finally fucking, well, Johnson, the executive producer, allegedly stepped down. But they're getting rid of Johnson from EastEnders as the EP. Uh, someone named Chris Clenshaw, who will, will be the next EP for EastEnders. So unlike Young the Restless, where nothing is probably going to change about this soap opera anytime soon, EastEnders actually seems to give a fuck and there's going to be a change. We still, we're still stuck with Kate Oge at uh, BBC, though. So I do feel like at some point we're going to see maybe a shot in the arm for EastEnders. Now, like I talked about in October, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or not, because I do feel like a lot of British EPs on these on the soap operas tend to go a little overboard, either get super duper dark, which I don't enjoy, or they do too many fucking stunts, which I also don't always enjoy. So it could, we'll see what Chris uh, Clenshaw actually brings. The little bit I've read about him, he seems to actually care about the show. So that's a step in the right direction. But as it stands for November, it was kind of more of the same, like I said at the beginning of this video. I feel like EastEnders has a lot of characters that I don't necessarily care about right now. And their stories just aren't really jumping off the page either. And still the main story seems to be Grey. So yeah, Chelsea and Grey, originally Grey proposed to Chelsea because she's having his kid. She turned him down at first, only to agree to it after that. And like I talked about in October for East Enders, the, the, the gray story needs to wrap it up. Wrap it up. If, if Johnson could do that on his way out, maybe it won't be the worst thing because that story needs to be wrapped up already. Like they're really trying to make us care about gray right now after he basically became a serial killer killing two people in the past two years. I feel like it's ridiculous. So he lost his job, and we have to feel sorry that he's flipping burgers. I don't care. So uh, there's no reason I should care about Craig. So I need that story to be wrapped up. Um, some of the other stories we saw in November, we saw Nancy, Locke, Frankie, who's deaf in a trunk. Liam then stole that car. It was a little side story, really, because it kind of just... Frankie just left after that, so I don't know. I don't think she's gone for good, but <sighs> it was more of like a ho-hum story. You know, it wasn't the worst thing, but it wasn't the best thing. We, we've seen a lot of uh, the character of Vi lately, who has another son. And it's another story that I find myself not caring about, and we have, oh, then we have this, this retcon where Sharon is now has a grandbaby of Dennis's and the character of Jada is the mother and the story just kind of came out of nowhere because I think they realized they killed off a legacy character and Sharon needs something. So she has a grandbaby made out of thin air. That's usually a sign that you, you fucked up in your storyline. EastEnders, they, they fucked up with their storytelling. So John Sen may be trying to right a wrong there. I don't know, it's not really working, but I, I mean, I don't hate it, but I just hate the fact that it's a retcon and it's kind of unknown. And then we have the character of Aaron, who's basically a Nazi, anti-Muslim. I think that's going to be the big story going into December and possibly January. And I mean, honestly, it's not the worst story to tell right now. Uh, I feel like a lot of countries are have a rise in communism, to say the least. I will say that. 
So touching upon this story isn't wrong. We'll see how they actually do with writing it because, you know, Johnson has a... Johnson's stories haven't been great, period. They've either been really boring or really bad decision-making. So, I mean, I don't have high hopes for the story of Aaron being a Nazi. I mean, those were kind of the, the main stories. I mean, we have the character of Rocky, too. I kind of like that story, too. But all in all, it's still not doing enough for me. I almost put these headers higher, though, I have to be honest. So I feel like I'm not as down on it as I was in October when I was coming into this whole ranking thing that I'm starting to do for the soap operas currently. So EastEnders at least has potential that I don't see in Young and the Restless. There's also enough other soap operas doing subpar that I can see EastEnders eventually moving on up in these rankings over the next few months. We'll see what they do for the big Christmas uh, stunt, I guess. To see what EastEnders gets in December for me. But like I said, it's more of the same for me centers in October. But on a daily basis, I found myself, you know, it was watchable. I didn't feel that way in October. I was kind of annoyed watching the episodes of East Center because I didn't care. It was very similar to The Young and the Restless. But unlike The Young and the Restless in November, for East Centers, I found myself getting into it a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more. So we'll see where they take us in December. If the stunt's good enough, maybe it will actually go up in my rankings. But for now, EastEnders remains at number 10 out of 11 soap operas.